Late night, a call comes in. It's a working fire. Hours with Fresno Fire. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. In 2009, a dwindling city budget required the Fresno Fire Department to close down all the engines assigned to two company houses. The result is standalone truck companies that are reluctantly used as quints. Uh, we had a call that came in in the middle of the night, and basically it ended up being it was an outside fire, so we automatically um, assigned an engine and a truck to go along. So we had gotten there first. Um, engine 8 came in right behind us, so we went ahead and used them as the attack pumper. They grabbed the tools off the rig. The engine company arrives on scene and quickly come alive. In the backyard of this home is a trailer on fire and in danger of spreading to the garage and to other homes nearby. Firefighter in the nozzle starts dousing the flames. Ended up being a little mobile home fire out inside, um, right up next to a garage. So we were concerned that, hey, we want to put lines on the fire and then also get inside and make sure that it didn't extend into the garage slash garage living unit. Um, in this area, we have quite a few people living in their garages, which was this case. It didn't extend into the garage, but um, so luckily we put our first line to get it out and try to protect it. One of the truckers works to gain access to the nearby garage to see if anyone is living there and gain access to the fire if it is coming through the wall. Firefighter Dodson breaks out the steel mesh on the security door and tries to unlock the door accessing the lock's thumb turn, but there is none, so he calls for the items. Residents in the neighboring home watch as the firefighters eliminate the chances of the fire spreading to their home. They throw a ladder to gain access to the roof. Engine company nearly have the fire knocked down. The inside of the garage shows that people are living in this structure.
enter into the small trailer. Everybody's gone, just you and me. Yeah, okay. I will get you one, sir. After the fire is successfully out, the crew of Truck 4 completes the salvage with the engine cover. Um, we had a small uh, motorhome that was uh, stored here on the property. Uh, the property is actually a duplex. Uh, both families living here are just renting. Uh, the owner lives in Hawaii. Sounds like the owner's son uses it for storage, so he comes in and out as he pleases. Other than that, uh, they came out and noticed it was on fire, so uh, right now we're just going to try and uh, make contact with the owner tomorrow and uh, see if we can get any information with uh, the owner's son, maybe, see uh, if we can find a cause of this. Back at the station, the crew indulges in some homemade cake and talk yeah. about the I was, I was cutting it back, and the front side, of that bumper, I was like, I see that light coming, and I'm like, I'm not going to make that. And I turn it back the other way. I don't know what's going on. Didn't want to ask any questions. No. Well, it took me a second. I was like, whatever you do, don't turn right. Okay. <laughs> Day, truck four receives a call. It's a third alarm of a fire in progress. The call that has really affected me the most um, was, I believe it was last year. We had a really unfortunate call. Um, a a two-year-old boy um, got a hold of his dad's 45 and uh, accidentally shot his six-year-old sister in the chest, point blank, killing her instantly, obviously. Um, but that was a pretty intense call. I mean, myself having uh, two kids of real similar ages, um, you know, really hit home. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, it's my job to deal with it, and, uh, and we dealt with it. <laughs> The truck crew is brought in. Give to the homeowners and their personal items. 
Captain Tucker and his crew do their best to salvage what is left in this home. Uh, yeah, be, we've had a lot of good calls being on the USAR team. We get a lot of, you know, gnarly extrications and you know, entrapments. Uh, we had a, uh, I was just probably my third or fourth year on the job on the USAR team. We got a call for uh, two college, or I'm sorry, two high school girls that had gotten rolled over with an earth, earth mover and crumbled their car up like a taco. Uh, it was, when we got there, it was still under the earth mover and uh, one of the girls was already passed by the time we got there, but the other one was pinned up right next to her and trapped in this car that, you know, looked like a crumbled up uh, soda can. And uh, it took us about two hours to peel the car away, away from around her and, you know, just being there emotionally supporting her because she's pinned up against her best friend who's, you know, passed away. And, uh, you know, we're sitting under this huge piece of machinery and, you know, we got a, a letter delivered to the station a few months later after she got out of the hospital, just, you know, thanking everyone for everything they did and, you know, kind of hit home, you know, that we made a little bit of a difference that day. This small fire was caused by some juveniles lighting the palm trees on fire. $50,000 in damage four people displaced from their homes. On a safety precaution on these calls on hot days, firefighters are rotating to help keep them hydrated, give them some rest, and keep them safe. The scene is safe. The crew of Truck 4 is released from the scene. Late afternoon, a call comes in for Truck 4. It's a smoke alarm at a local retail store. <laughs> Truck 4 arrives on scene. The firefighters enter the store and are directed to the storage area of the store where the employees smelled the smoke. Firefighter Schwarm uses a thermal imager to check for any hot spots throughout the storage area as Firefighter Dotson continues to inspect for smoke or fire. Anyone has arrived on scene and assist in the search. They do notice a smoky smell, but cannot seem to locate any smoke or any sign of fire or a flare up leaving smoke residue. Dissipating. Firefighters head for the roof. They extend the tower platform at the end of the ladder of the truck to the roof of the store. They all check the AC units with the thermal imagers. We're just checking out the AC units to make sure they're not burned up, but they're all working fine, so it's got to be something inside. There is nothing to be found. The ladder is lowered, and the outriggers are brought in. Um, we had an uh, odor of smoke in a storage room in the back of this uh, 99 cent store. Uh, we did some investigating in the back. By the time we were getting here, there wasn't any smoke. There was still a slight odor. It was dissipating while, while we were investigating. Um, had the guys go on the roof, check the AC units. Uh, there's a really big um, housekeeping issue with the storage here, so kind of hard to completely investigate, look around. 
whatever it is, we could not reproduce the, uh, the smell. It dissipated while we we're investigating. Uh, didn't seem to be any problems back there, so not sure right now. Uh, I advise the uh, the store uh, workers, and they're going to keep an eye on it, see if anything recurs. Truck four is back in service. Back at the station, the crew prepare dinner. On his days off, firefighter Dotson works as a general contractor and discusses some of his work with Captain Tucker. Generally, it doesn't matter that much um, for me. I can do it either way. Generally, when it's a bid, um, there's a small factor of assumptions or guess where right. it goes in the pricing. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll pad the end of my right. final price, I'll pad it by 10%. Okay, yeah, yeah. So. Right they relax as always in anticipation for the next call. Oh, that was you. That's true. Was that you? Did you make your own? No, it's totally different. Later in the night, a call comes in. It's a commercial structure fire. Captain Tucker explains the call from the film footage that he filmed and the film footage filmed by the captain from Engine 1. We were the uh, first truck to arrive. Uh, truck 4 is the first truck to arrive. Engine 5, uh, first to arrive probably about 15 seconds to, uh, prior to us. Engine 1 uh, was right there also. Engine 5 reported uh, smoke showing from a strip mall, from the laundromat specifically, that was on the south end of the, uh, of the mall. Uh, there's four occupancies. Uh, he assigned Engine 1 to fire attack with his crew and uh, assigned Truck 4 ventilation. Yeah, okay. So I got out, did a face-to-face -face with him, took a look, saw some uh, light gray smoke in the uh, laundromat, thinking that's all it was, and I was actually questioning whether we were going to vent it or not. And then when I looked over, I noticed the other two occupancies had thick, charged black smoke in it. It wasn't just, you know, dark because it was at night, so. Went back over the truck, advised the crew, hey, we're going to take the roof, ventilate. Uh, we set the truck up. Uh, three of us got in the uh, bucket. We went up, took a look, had a really decent parapet uh, roof that we'd have to definitely commit to. We didn't see out any fire when we were on the A side of the fire out front. Uh, once we got up, got in the ladder, we were raising it. Um, I had good fire showing through the common wall between the um, between the laundromat and the fish market that was next door. There was some vents, there was fi good fire coming out of there. Also out of the mansard roof on the, uh, on the rear side. Uh, it had a mansard that went uh, all along the front, also along the back, um, oddly enough. And uh, there was heavy fire back there. So I advised, one, he needed to get a unit back there for, to assist fire attack in the back. 
Um, and also that we weren't going to be taking the roof. It was, uh, there, you can tell there was a lot of fire to get that kind of commitment down onto a parapet roof. That was, that'd be too much. Copy, I see that. I'm going to reassign you to, uh, uh it'll be Division, uh, David. Copy, Division David. Copy, Division David. Um, so sure enough, we, we swung back around. Um, I decided, hey, we might as well set up. Uh, we're going to have aerial uh, master stream operation going here pretty quick. So we swung back down, didn't bed the ladder completely. I went back down, did face to face with uh, the captain on engine five, who is an uh, incident commander advising, hey, a lot of fire, we're not doing anything, we're gonna go ahead and set up for a master stream operation, uh, give me a supply uh, pumper. So um, I think he assigned engine nine to uh, hook into a hydrant and supply us. Got back up in the bucket, uh, our other engineer stayed down, he, uh, uh, he ran the pump, uh, myself and firefighter Dotson went back up in the bucket, came back at that time, um, Within a minute, we weren't even just set up in a good position. Still, I was still raising the ladder, and uh, the AC unit had collapsed on, uh, on the, in the fish market and part of the uh, laundromat at that time. So, within you know five minutes of making that decision, the roof was already collapsing. Uh, from there, we just set up again, uh, kind of defensive um, uh, aerial mass stream operation is what we were specifically uh, doing at that time. Guys, you're gonna have those windows broken out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, shut down for a second. Uh, yeah, while we're up there, I'm um, obviously taking some pretty good heat, just in general with the fire burning pretty well. Um, and then you can see it uh, burning in the mansard there and on the backside. And apparently this thing, as, like a lot of structures uh, do, they'd rebuilt that thing a few times. It was originally built as a, you know, lightweight construction with, you know, maybe some uh, uh, shingles out there. They've come back now and put some Spanish tiles, it weighs more all that, everybody noticed the dangers of it. Uh, the ground crews are even pulling back knowing this thing's gonna come down. Um, eventually, looking at this thing, you see it burning, and uh, probably about two thirds of the mansard there on the front side collapsed and uh, came down and pretty much almost below us. It was getting it was getting pretty hot up there prior to that, um, and when that happened, that got a little bit under our bucket, and I definitely had to uh, uh, rotate the ladder a little bit to the left, and uh, while we get that thing cooled down, that initial heat it, it got pretty hot up there, so very entertaining. The crew wet the rubber and whatever is left of the strip mall.
get here. 